This is One on One. There he is, Benjamin Klein, the resident director of Warhorse, and to his left, Matt Atchison, I can do this, resident puppetry <laughs> director of Warhorse. How you doing, guys? We're Good. great. Excellent. I mean, Warhorse is big. Five Tonys, right, 2011, including Best Play? Yep. And it's... where can people see this play? At, Link at Lincoln Center. At Why do you look at him Beaumont. for the answer? <laughs> We, you know, we do everything together at the theater. You know, we're, we're the team that keeps the show going. So along with our stage managers, we yeah. kind of bounce off of each other. So I, I don't know whether or not it's a puppet thing or if it's an actor thing. So I just jump up there. But I got to tell you something. You just look at, by the way, we have video guys. Uh, as we're getting ready to set up um, some of the videos, some of the pictures, these, this, these horses are puppets. Mm -hmm. And there's multiple people inside the, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, why don't we do this? Instead of me doing a terrible description, <laughs> you don't have to laugh at that. Oh, oh, really uh, embarrassed. Yeah. It was We're great. It was great. <laughs> why don't we take a look at a uh, clip from Warhorse, and then we'll talk about it. First of all, I'm, I'm, as I'm watching, I'm not even thinking there are people mm -hmm. inside, right? Yeah. That's okay. our hope. A, how does that happen? <laughs> B, give us a setup of the story. Go ahead. Tell them how well, it happened. I think that um, from the very beginning of the show, we kind of lay out the mechanisms right there on stage. There's the puppet, and then you see the puppeteers. And I think what is so successful and why the puppeteers disappear is because we're asking you to meet us halfway, if not more, with the story. So as an audience member, you become completely um, active, and, and you're, you're doing the work. You're doing more work than we are. So you become immediately more invested in the, in the production, in the story, and you just jump right in and follow along. And the story is, is simply stated, a, a boy and his horse. Yeah, I like to say a, a horse and his boy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really, you have to, you have it's to a story be about, Oh yeah, I do, I do, basically. Well, it's a story about Joey. Joey is our right. protagonist of this story. We follow him to war. Then Albert, who is the boy in the show, goes into war Joey's as well. the horse. Uh, Joey's yeah. the horse, exactly. Right. So um, we, we watch Joey grow up from a foal, and then we get to see him go off to war, and it's whether or not Joey and Albert will find each other again. Um, but the whole time you're following Joey and trying to find out if he's going to survive the war and what's going to happen. What always amazes me when I was looking at this and doing the research, getting ready for the show, I'm thinking, and I said this to you right before you got on the air, the level of physical fitness, mm -hmm. right, of the puppeteers has got to be off the charts, right? Yeah, it's, it's a very, very physical show. And the puppets themselves weigh a lot and they take writers, so the weight gets even How more. How much? I think the puppets weigh about 85, 90 pounds, and then once a rider gets on that, it's another mm, however much that person yeah. weighs. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. How many puppeteers are we talking? There are um, 15 total, um, and there's f uh, four teams of three puppeteers. Four teams of three puppeteers. Yeah, yeah. and so the, puppet the teams rotate throughout the, the week, so they don't do, not one team does eight shows in a horse. Right. That would, probably kill them. It keeps right. them moving and they're constantly doing it. They might do Joey, the, the main horse, and then they might do Top Thorn, who's another horse, who's the black horse that you saw in the footage, and then they'll but do even, other things. Yeah, even well. when they're not in a horse, they're still running around on stage constantly throughout the show, being a soldier or crow, or there's secondary horses that they also play. So they're constantly, we talked about this before, they have to rehab, they have to yeah make sure that they avoid injuries. If they are injured, they have to make sure that they're taken care of. All these things matter. Yeah, yeah. we're keeping the physical ther therapy offices working <laughs> right now, and, and they're getting acupuncture, they're getting massages, they're taking care of their own bodies in, in sure. the ways that they have to do, and, and they are, yeah, they're incredibly well fit. Yeah. How'd you guys get pulled into this whole thing? <laughs> um, I uh, worked on the Coast of Utopia, which was also at Lincoln Center Theater, and. Um, so I was the associate director on that and so I had a relationship with the theater and 
directing's what I do, and War Horse came around, and uh, they, they asked me if I'd come, a, come aboard. So. What's your story? I'm, I've just been a puppeteer in New York for quite some time, and uh, when the creative team came over originally, I think they were just looking to see who's in the city and who's available, and um, luckily they contacted me, and then I stayed there. <laughs> what, what makes this particular play so different from any other play you've worked on? Oh gosh, uh, I think this show is is an accumulation of amazing creative work. You've got the puppetry, but you've got an amazing soundtrack of music. You've got a story that's incredibly human that touches people, that is funny at times, and it, mm -hmm. you've got live musicians on stage. I mean, all of the elements come together and and crash and become this incredible theatrical experience. I think it's also exciting that there's all these elements, but it's such an incredibly simple design and it's such a minimal stage that, again, it's, it's the work of everybody in that room on stage and in the audience that actually makes the show work. And Talk it, about the audience. I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah. Talk about the audience reaction. I'm curious about this. <laughs> you, you, said, you said meet, earlier on in the interview, yeah. you said we asked them to meet us halfway. Now we ask them to ask, uh, meet us a little bit more yeah. than halfway. How quickly, and I know every audience is different, yeah. but by and large. I, it, at, by and large, I think as soon as Baby Joey starts the show, you The can, Red Horse. The re, yep. yep. We, I, we look around, some people start to cry right away, yeah. some people like lean in the, into yeah. the edge of their seat. It's pretty, the horses are gorgeous. I've heard a... And the um, lighting is gorgeous. Oh, it's amazing. I've heard a story where uh, um, an audience member at one point, there's lots of explosions in the show because we're at war, obviously. And at one point, they they actually thought, "Oh, I wonder what all those explosions do to the horses." You know, so they <laughs> they had fully gone to that place where they were thinking there were live horses in the theater, and that must really make them crazy. You know, and that's the kind of thing that you're thinking about all the time. Yeah. Is like, you know, there's that that you you go over, you see them breathe, which yeah. is amazing. You see them breathe. Yeah. yeah. Where do you guys watch the show from? Oh, all, all over. All over yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, all over? We're, we, we're at, well, wherever we can find a seat, depending on yep. the night. Um, but we're up in the balcony, in the loge. In the loge. We're downstairs, we're off to the sides, we're in the stage yeah. management It's important office, to get a different everywhere. vantage point of the show throughout and, and to hear it from different places yeah. because you, if you're further down in the uh, orchestra section, you might be hearing different things and making sure the acoustics are always great. Um, but yeah, we're all over the place. You know, uh, you won the five Tony Awards in 2011, and for us, we're always squeaking and trying to get things better. Um, we we want to think we're the best, but this, what does that mean? You mm -hmm. know, when you're the best, how do you tweak real quick? 30 seconds. Oh gosh, you're. That's the thing about live theater. You're never done. You're you're always making it better. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, and keeping it fresh and spontaneous, and keeping the ant the horses wild. That's the biggest thing. Where can people see War Horse? You can see it at the Lincoln Center Theater at uh, Vivian Beaumont Theater, and you can check out information on warhorseonstage.com. See, that's why we came see. to Lincoln Center. Because we <laughs> got to do this show and meet terrific people like that's you wonderful. doing great work. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Really One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET Studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Medical Center, Berkeley College, TD Bank, QualCare Inc., a local managed care company covering 750,000 New Jersey residents, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Verizon Communications, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com, Everything Jersey, and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.